Hey everyone, welcome back to the Dungeon Dive. Daniel here. All right, so tonight I am here with a look at Fortune and Glory, the cliffhanger game from Flying Frog Productions. A game that I am sure needs no introduction. There are, there's no shortage of videos on this game on YouTube, but I thought I'd chime in with my two cents. Um, I have been away for a couple weeks, so I have been playing some games, not a lot though. Um, I'm playing in a new band right now, and we have our first show coming up in a, in a week or so, and so we've been practicing a lot and getting ready for that. And it's summertime, and it's kind of hot being cooped up in my game room. But I have been playing Fortune and Glory, and this is actually set up a few turns into um, a game, and this is actually the second game of this I've played um, during the last couple of weeks and I don't have a ton to say about this game except for it's really really fun uh, this is one of the most fun games I think especially considering its size uh, the game is an absolute table hog as I'm sure all of you know all of you who play it know uh, this is the game with the two expansions that are available for it. I am greatly looking forward to the expansions that they have um, ready to come out sometime in the next six months, maybe if they can ever stop making stuff for Shadows of Brimstone. And remember that they do in fact make other games, hint, hint. Um, yeah, but, uh, but yeah, this game, it's basically, it is Indiana Jones, the board game. You are playing these explorers, and in this instance, I am playing as Angel Espinosa. The, she's a grease monkey, and Jenny Butler. She's an actress, and we are out adventuring around the world, fighting against, in this instance, the mob. I'm fighting the mob in here. Uh, there are a few different groups of bad guys you can play against in the solo game or the co-op game you can play against the mob you can play against the nazis and you can play against the order of the crimson hand i usually play against these guys i really like them thematically um the cults worshiping the old gods and trying to resurrect strange beings and that kind of thing uh the mob i would say is probably the easiest of the bad guy groups to play but they're fun but basically you are gallivanting around the world looking for these relics and there's always going to be four relics out such as the dagger of pharaoh the skull of the purple pale moon the crown of dark fire and the gloves of darkness and you have to go to where they are located and you have to pass a series of tests based on your attributes and you can use your items and allies and all kinds of things to help you pass those tests and when i say all kinds of things i mean i mean this game with the expansions just has an absolutely epic ton of content and cards um everything from this giant deck of random events that can that you get so when you roll to move like in most of flying frog productions games if you roll a one since you're only moving a little bit you get a little bit of a bonus you know an sob you get grit in this game you get to draw an event card and these can help you in all kinds of ways a few of them can hurt you but most of the time these are going to help you out and then there's all kinds of different gear that you can buy that are going to add to your stats and they're going to each one of these is going to help you there are mundane or what do they call them here uh, common items and these can be purchased horses and revolvers a plane that you can get to help um, trekking across the, the 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 map easier rifles a book of lore maps there are different random encounters you have in the city and once again though these are like those old style um flying frog production cards they're really shiny and kind of crappy quality but it almost kind of does add to the weird pulpy nature of the game 
So you can run into all kinds of different people and events when you stop at cities. There are a number of allies that you can hire and they can help you out on your adventure by adding to your stats and adding to your skills. And then you have these villain events and these are what you play with when you're playing the co-op game. These kind of like dictate the random nature of the enemies, what they're going to do. You have a bunch of enemies to fight, ranging from cultists to zombies to gangsters, um, thugs, savage gorillas. So it just everything about this game just screams theme. It's it's so thematic, and one of the best ways it illustrates that is when you are questing for a relic. And you have to pass one of these or a series of these challenges. And the relic will dictate like how many you have to pass. So for instance, if you were going after the dagger of Pharaoh, um, you would have to pass five challenges to get through, to find that dagger and to keep it and to get it as your own and take it back to a city to sell, to get, the fortune to get the glory that you need to win the game but what's really cool about this game is like the serials of old like the Indiana Jones adventures the pulp novels it's all about having these hair-raising adventures that push the heroes to the max and the heroes are constantly kind of scrambling to get one step ahead of the evil organizations they're working for. And so with these different challenge cards, with these different skill tests, there is a great mechanism of pushing your luck where you have to roll a certain amount of successes. And every time you roll your pool of dice, depending on the skill, depending on what's being tested, as long as you roll one success, so in this instance, you would have to test, test your cunning at a six plus, and you need two successes. So if you had a cunning of four, you would roll four dice and you're looking for any sixes. And well, there we go, I had none. So I would completely have failed that but let's say I rolled one six. Well, that gives me one success. So I can either push my luck and keep going, trying to get that second six on an additional test, or I can decide to back off a little bit, rest, uh, camp down, they call it, kind of catch my breath and then try it again later. But there's a chance that a villain could come in and snake that away from you. But if you keep going and you press your luck and you don't get that additional six, well then you flip that card over and it becomes the cliffhanger version and so it's kind of like you know in the old in the old uh films flash gordon and um uh, just all of those old pulp pulp series the uh like the jungle adventures and stuff you know it would end with the uh with the rope breaking and the hero like grabbing for the ledge and you don't know if he's gonna make it and you have the cliffhanger and so when that happens you push this over and then you have to do usually a more powerful or, or, or a, a more um, difficult check and for usually a little less of a victory condition or victory uh, reward. But overall, every time I've played this game, I've had a lot of fun with it. One of the things that I really like that one of the expansions adds are these other random events that can happen in the major cities. So you have this nice big sheet here that has some different things that can happen to you when you're in one of the big cities like Paris, Shanghai, Hong Kong, uh, New York, Chicago, London, uh, that kind of thing. So it's always fun. You, you're just, you're always moving around, discovering new things, discovering new allies and items and going on these crazy quests. So the game can be a little bogged down in minutia, like many um, Flying Frog production games can be. It's not overly difficult, but there are a lot of things to remember. 
for instance, like just look at this villain phase, this cheat sheet printed from BGG. So these are just all the things you kind of have to remember. But as long as you have one of these sheets, it's super easy because you just like, go through the steps. And if then, you know, if this is true, then you do this. If not, you do the other and you just read through it and you can actually move through the game pretty quickly. Um, the adventure phase is kind of like the main phase of the game. After your heroes move and they encounter a space, well, then you just kind of look, you know, are they on an artifact? Are they in a city? Are they on another piece of land or in the sea? And then you just do what it says. Um, it looks, these flow charts make it look super complicated, but it's really not, but those flow charts do a lot to just help you, um, help you keep track of all the little things that are easy to miss in games like this. But once you play it a few times, it'll become like second nature really. And it does all make sense. It's pretty logical. You just have to kind of don't move too fast or else you will um, miss something. But when you're fighting the mob and when you're fighting one of the evil organizations, it's it's a little bit like pandemic, if I could speak. Um, there is a little bit of a threat management because as the evil organizations, they get their thugs out on the board. In this case, you have these little minis for the uh, mobsters. And you kind of have to go around and you have to take them out because you don't want too many of them on the board because if there are too many well then maybe they're going to develop stronger bases or they're going to have more power they're going to be able to do more things and there are main villains too that you're going to be fighting named villains in this case we have Vanessa Love and Joey Smiles so these are some of the uh, mobsters that you might fight the main bad guys, like those that I just mentioned, are represented with red minis. And they're the ones who are going to be competing against the players to get those artifacts and to get them back into the clutches of the evil organization. So there are a number of ways you can play this game. I've only ever played it co-op, single player, to tell you the truth. I've, I've never played this with a group. I would like to. I would like to play this with a, maybe a group of three or four as, as the co-op. I've never played it competitively. I don't know if I would like it like that. And I've never played the team version. So my experience in the game might seem somewhat uh, limited. So I can only speak to that aspect of, the, um, of Fortune and Glory. One other really cool thing I like that the one of the expansions added were these dock tokens. So whenever you're in a city that has a harbor, such as uh, Barcelona or San Francisco, Los Angeles and stuff, you can encounter these dock counters. And each one of these has another kind of like a little random thing that can happen to you. You can get extra fortune. You can find you can get free travel to any other uh, harbor. You might run into a villain and have to fight. Uh, you might be Shanghai away. Um, so all kinds of they just they keep adding all kinds of really neat random things that can happen. You guys know how much I love just a vast amount of variety in these kinds of games and and Flying Frog Productions. They never. They're never afraid to throw more random things that can happen to you in a game. And I really like that. It, it makes me happy to see all this stuff and just to get to use it. I'm really hoping that the new expansions coming out, I think they're going to add probably another, um, another group. I think like a spider queen or something like that. And um, they'll probably add even more events, more cliffhanger, more challenges, more heroes. And just more ways to have really cool adventures, you know, globe trotting around, looking for lost artifacts, fighting, and getting into adventures and misadventures. Um, it would be a really fun day to play this and Secrets of the Lost Tomb, kind of like in a 
in a uh, in a marathon type session, really thematic. Get some cool music going, some some fancy cocktails or something like that. I think that would be a lot of fun. Maybe I'll set that up with some friends of mine and take some some video or some uh, some photos. So, all right. Well, that was just a, a kind of a quick little look at Fortune and Glory, the game that I have been spending some time with over the last couple of weeks during my absence from the d dungeon dive. Uh, things will probably be a little slow through the remainder of the summer. I have a couple other things planned. I do want to get some games to the table. I am thinking of ways to, I don't know, change the channel a little bit. Um, I am kind of tightening my belt in the money that I'm going to be spending on board games for the foreseeable future. Just trying to change my habits a little bit and not be so concerned about always getting new things and really just going back to enjoying the things I like more in depth. And so I am probably going to be doing more in-depth series on certain games and maybe even going back to some Let's Plays of certain games even though I do make a lot of mistakes and people always point them out, um, I'm just going to ignore them and play the games that I like. And I'm thinking about doing a really long Let's Play series of Warhammer Quest. I think that would be a lot of fun. But anyways, sorry for the little ramble there at the end. But yeah, Fortune and Glory, the cliffhanger game. If you guys haven't bought it now, I don't. I think it's still in print right now. If not, it'll be coming back in print soon because of the expansions that they're planning. But I highly recommend this game. It's super fun. It takes a little bit of time to learn, a little bit of time to set up, and it takes up a lot of space. But it's always fun. I've never had a bad time playing it. So that's it. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.